What's your true life story that nobody will believe? My dad was married two times before my mom. When he was with his second wife, he would travel a lot for work, which I knew. What I didn't know was that one night he came home to find his wife in bed with another man. Actually walked in on them. He left the room and came back with a gun. Shot the man dead and wounded his wife. He turned himself in immediately and was sent to prison. He was sentenced to 10 years in a maximum security prison. In the last year he was in prison, which was the fourth year, he got out for good behavior, and since the judge ruled it a crime of passion, he met the prison minister. The prison minister was my mom. My dad is a murderer, my mom was the minister. I am the product of a conjugal visit. My aunt has only ever flown from Atlanta airport twice. The first time it was hijacked, taken to Cuba, and then sent back to the States. The second time the landing gear didn't work and they did a crash landing on the belly of the plane. My aunt has never flown through Atlanta since. In college I had a bumped bed with my desk under it. I was in bed reaching for my cell on the desk and lost my balance, fell off the bed, did a full flip and landed in a perfect sitting position in my chair unharmed. My roommate witnessed everything but nobody we believed us. I met a guy online. We emailed and messaged, this was before texting was a thing, and went out a few times. I liked him but wasn't sure about it. He called me pretty regularly, again, this was pre-texting. One day, no calls. That night I called and left him a message. No return call. I called his work the next day, and he hadn't shown up. I called the police, who did a well-person check at his house, but he wasn't there. I wasn't there. The next day the police called me back they'd found his body. He'd been murdered by one of his neighbors and I had to testify at the trial. My husband had the opportunity to operate on a gorilla's knee once. They have essentially the same anatomy as humans, so they ask human physicians to operate on them in many major zoos. It was really cool, and afterwards they gave him a painting done by the gorilla as thanks. Apparently the gorilla was going through some adolescent rank wars with other male gorillas and had his knee battered and bitten, though the meniscus. I know, it's his story, not mine, but he doesn't get on the internet, and I think it's super cool and I'm really proud of him. Edit, we had it framed with the thank you note from Belly, the gorilla, and his trainer. Long story short. I was asleep at a friend's, a kid who was there thought my friend's .45 cow handgun was a BB gun, he shot me in the left ass cheek, severed femoral vein, damaged femoral artery, life support for a week and a half, three eight hour surgeries, permanent femoral vein to femoral vein bypass, fake vein, and a little over a year later I'm back on my feet on my way to being normal again. Mentioned this before on this sub, but my life is akin to a bad pun at times. I was carrying my skis, slipped on some ice, and fell down. I asked a passing girl if she could lend me a hand with the skis while I got up. She then told me she had no arms, and proceeded to wave her empty coat sleeves around as proof. I just kind of fumbled to get up whilst apologizing profusely. She diddled and walked away. When I was 23, I had to spend the night at the DC Reagan airport. I hadn't gone through security yet so I was walking the main strip where you check in. It was about 1am so there was no one there since the counters were closed. Then out of nowhere, Stevie fucking Wonder shows up. Said hi for like a minute then, he and his assistant disappeared. On my way home from school about 7 years ago, I was sitting at a very busy intersection waiting to turn left. It was very gloomy outside. All of a sudden, it sounded and felt like the back of my car exploded. There was also a quick, very bright light that flashed in my rearview mirror. I panicked, and noticed immediately after that the stop lights stopped working, and it also began to rain. I looked out in the distance, and saw a lightning strike. I also looked on either side of me where there was a ton of traffic, and everyone was staring at me like this. That's right, I was struck by lightning. Okay, here we go. I had to jerk into a cup to count my soldiers because I had a long time testicle infection. Sorry, you have to use the children's room, every other room is occupied. So as I enter the room I see Sesame Street bucks, stuffed animals, colorful walls and a clock on the wall having animals as numbers. The nurse tells me that there are no prawn magazines available and I tried to be funny and said doesn't matter, Ernie and Bert are enough for me to get off. She did not get the joke. Then she asked me if I know how to masturbate and gave me a quick rundown on how to masturbate, all the while looking disgusted and angry. Okay, so there I was, in a children's room in a urology clinic trying to masturbate into a cup while stuffed animals were looking at me with a nurse right in front of the door. I heard her telling the other nurses my fetish about Sesame Street, they all laughed. I had to start over. When I got to the point where I thought that I could fill the cup, the F clock on the wall started to move and make F loud cow noises because it was 12 o'clock. I must have sighed very loudly because the whole floor went nuts and started laughing even harder. Start over NR2. 
When I finally finished and left the room, the nurses were still laughing. I've posted this before, but here we go again. When we were younger, we would play a game where we would throw a pot lid as far as we could into the water and someone would have to fetch it. Basically like playing fetch with your dog. The kid who would win was the one who swung the furthest. One day, a kid threw the lid really far, but the other kid was determined to get it. He swam out really far and then bam. The crocodile got him and dragged him underwater. I'm adopted. In fact, my nine siblings and I were all adopted. Each one of us had some medical issue when we were born. I was misdiagnosed as having cystic fibrosis. Two of my sisters have spins bifida, my older brother had a hole in his heart, and my younger brother is an asshole. Despite all this, my parents loved us and gave us a good life. I unknowingly installed webcams, computers, and internet access into a 10-room mansion for a wealthy business executive who was importing 18 years old boys from Thailand to be his pets. It took about two months to complete the whole project and he would always take me out to get hot dogs for lunch. I've been hunted across the country by the FBI. They found me, no need to refine me. I was at a rave once when a drive-by occurred and I dove behind a giant propane tank for protection. I went from making $20,000 per year to $150,000 per year in one phone call and three days later. My sister once said, throw over a salami slice. So I opened the refrigerator, grabbed that one perfect slice and threw it right over my shoulder. I never did something like that and I don't often throw food. The salami flew like crazy and landed perfectly on the bread. Never done something more epic. Just after I turned 19, I was arrested and charged for an armed robbery I was completely innocent of. I spent 10 months in jail, 6 of which I spent in solitary confinement on suicide watch. I spent my birthday at a resort hotel with my girlfriend at the time, and that night at around 3 a.m. the front desk was robbed by two people, one with a gun and one with a knife. We were questioned when we left the hotel at 11 a.m., since we roughly, roughly, matched a height-slash-weight description of the masked robbers. Later that day, it was discovered that my girlfriend had used a bad credit card to pay for the room, unbeknownst to me, and we were both publicly arrested on a sidewalk and taken to the state police barracks in handcuffs, without a word on what we were being charged with. We were taken to separate rooms and questioned for hours on end about the robbery, with the same questions over and over again. She ended up going to jail for the credit card and I was released but told to return the next day for further questioning. I did, and was taken to a back room, sat in a corner, and had two detectives relentlessly question me, picking apart everything I was saying, looking for any circumstantial evidence that could connect me to the crime, and suggesting to me that my girlfriend had robbed the place and I was going down with her if I didn't give them information. Being 19, I had no idea what to do and believed what they were telling me. I didn't question the falsified information they presented to me and I was brought several times to the brink of giving a confession after being threatened with 10 years upstate if I didn't cooperate. 10 days later, two officers showed up at my door and arrested me for armed robbery. My girlfriend was coerced into giving a confession implicating me as an accomplice. I was placed immediately into solitary on 24-hour suicide watch and anxiously waited for a public defender. A week later, she showed up and I told her I was totally innocent. She rolled her eyes and said, Are you kidding me? I burst into tears, my last hope of release being dashed, and she realized I was telling the truth. She said there's no defense against my girlfriend's confession, and I sank into such a deep depression coupled with shock that I had a psychotic break a few months into my stay. 90 days in solitary at 19 with no hope of proving your innocence will do that. The district attorney made periodic visits to me, offering two to five year deals for a confession and 10 years if I fought the charges, but I told him I would not admit to something I didn't do. Fast forward to six months after my arrest, all spent in solitary. I was woken and driven hurriedly early one morning to the state police barracks, where the DA met with me in a back room and said, we have determined through further investigation that you were not at the scene of the crime. I was bursting with anger inside and said, so you'll be releasing me today and dropping all charges, correct? He got nervous and said, no, we can't let you go without charges because it would look very bad on us, but I'll tell you what, we'll drop all the charges and give you a charge of interfering with the investigation. You'll be out in less than six months. I told him to get my lawyer there. I had a fairly heated exchange, my first real emotions I had felt other than despair in half a year, and agreed. I pleaded guilty to aiding and abetting the consummation of a crime after the fact and ended up doing 10 months total. A few months after my release, my girlfriend was released and we tried piecing together what happened. Out of nowhere, the mother of the man who planned and committed the robbery found us and told us in person that her son admitted to her that he robbed the place with a close friend of his. He had been fired from the resort three days earlier and needed money to support his drug habit. He knew what day would profit most, where the money was, and how to easily get it, as well as how to bypass all forms of security. 
She went to the police and they turned her away, saying they already had the people who did it and they didn't want to hear it. We tried hard to find a lawyer to take our case but were never successful. This DA was later investigated for intimidation and abuse of power in a separate case, and to this day that is my only sense of justice in this situation. I was declared a divine gift by the monks of St. Catherine's Monastery in Egypt. The monastery was built around the alleged burning bush from the book of Exodus, and since I was really into religions at the time, I asked the monks some questions about the bush and whether they have any other interesting relics in their monastery. The monks went silent and asked me and my family to follow them down to the gates of the burning bush. They let us see the alleged remnants of the burning bush, even though we were not Orthodox Christians. This is a privilege granted only to high officials in the Orthodox Church, and they said we were the first secular people to ever see the bush. After visiting the bush, the monks gave me some kind of a special blessing where they declared me as that divine gift and a silver ring with Greek writing on it. I was a kid at the time so I didn't really react to it in an extravagant way, but my mom was dumbfounded for days, since she is a very religious person. Now at an older age I'm just wondering if they do this every now and then as a prank, or if they actually saw something special in me. Edit, for the people asking, I still have the ring in my childhood home, but I'm sorry that I can't provide pictures because I live pretty far away. I am not a religious person, my agnosticism grows stronger every year. And no, even though I have what some would call an identic memory, it doesn't mean that I can remember what happened on a specific date many years ago. It means that I can memorize pictures, texts and number chains for a long period of time after seeing them once. I'm still shitty in math though, God. I was in Mexico way past my visa allowance, was only allowed 90 days but was there for about 6 months at the time of this story. I was driving in past the police car going too fast so I got pulled over. I should mention I was also illegally working in Mexico at the time as well and had my uniform and stuff in my trunk. As I'm pulled over and doing the whole license registration thing, the cops ask me for my visa. I told them it was at my house which was not too far away and if they would allow me to go get it. At this point I just wanted to be alone for a second so I could make some calls and find out what to do. They asked me if they let me get it would it even be valid. Not wanting to lie and fuck myself over more, I told them no it was expired and asked them what now. They started explaining to me that they would have to take me to jail and then deport it. At this point I am talking to one officer while the other is searching my car and finds my uniform. They ask me if I'm working in Mexico as well. At this point they are getting angry and start making vague threats about how I will be getting the same treatment Mexicans get when they are in the US working illegally and get caught. At this point I realized they didn't realize my license was a Canadian license and that I was Canadian. I told them this and instantly the situation completely changed. Now they don't care about the visa and are asking me tons of questions about Canada. Is it cold all year? Do bears wander the streets of Toronto etc. We talked for quite a while and they seemed really interested in Canada and were really friendly with me when they realized I wasn't American. So when I calmed down a bit after talking with them I figure might as well ask again what they want to do about the visa situation. They seemed apologetic and said unfortunately they already called it and so they have to bring me to the station. As I am ready to start going with them may hear the radio in their cruiser so one goes to answer it. He comes running back to my car and tells me to quickly get in my car and follow them down the road and don't even think about trying to get away from them. At this point I have no idea what the fuck is going on but I just do what he says and get in my car and follow them as they start speeding away, 100 plus in a 60. About 2 minutes down the road, a car bomb had gone off near a restaurant and injured, maybe killed I never found out, a bunch of people. We pull up to the smoldering car and the cops get out and tell me to wait in my car. As I wait in my car they go and do their cop thing. After about 20 minutes, one of the officers comes up to my car, hands me my license, tells me to go home and not get caught again and get back to Canada ASAP. I stayed in Mexico another 8 months before I went back. My cousin and I, both males, were about 12 years old and as most 12 year old boys like to do we were climbing things. We decided to climb onto the roof of a house and everything went smooth. We got up and hung out and talked about how awesome we were for conquering this mountain of a house. Well we go to get down and we have to drop down and hang and get our feet on a railing on the back porch. My cousin goes first and he gets down no problem exactly as planned so I was feeling confident as ever. I scoot to the side of the house and grab the roof and drop down the hen, well my grip wasn't what I thought it was and I lost hold of the house and just like in the movies landed with one leg on each side of the rail. I just rolled off to my right so that I would land on the deck and could cry in the fetal position but I didn't realize the grill was right there so I hit my head on the grill on the way down. I had to go to the hospital because my sack was black and blue and a nice young nurse got to skim my balls to make sure there was no serious damage. Luckily there were no lasting effects and I can look back on it and laugh now. TL, DR Humpty Dumpty, but luckily didn't need put back together.
When I was 10 years old, I was dared by another kid to trip up the Prime Minister of the UK, who, at the time was Tony Blair. I did it. Dude buckled like a little bitch. Saw him three years afterwards, and I never made a contact with him. Other story, got hit by a car twice in one day. Not the same car, thankfully, but it was on the same road, at separate times during that day. Edit, I'm getting asked where did I do this, I can't remember the location exactly, but it was a dinner party that my grandparents were invited to. They know people in the government. My biological father is a drug dealer, specifically cocaine. My mother was a client of his and started sleeping with him in exchange for drugs. She got pregnant and tried to have an abortion, but it failed. That's where I came into the picture. My father decided that he should rape me repeatedly from around ages 4 to 6. He then got the great idea to sell me to other men to be in a child prostitution and pornography ring. I was videoed being raped and tortured, and those videos were sold. I was never sent to kindergarten. Child Protective Services realized something was horribly wrong when I was 7 and I was sent to live with my grandparents. In the process of the transfer from my mom to extended family, I was kidnapped. I was taken across the country and hidden in an attic for about a week before I was found. My uncle hired a private detective who was able to track me down and find me. There were multiple Amber Alerts sent out for me as well. My extended family did not even know I existed until CPS and the police contacted them. When I was finally found they realized that at age 7, I weighed 38 pounds and was significantly malnourished. I had some severe developmental delays, like not being able to read or tie my shoes. I had actually never used silverware before and did not know what a fork was. I was essentially a child that never existed until then. There was quite the lengthy court battle that followed and I was sent to live with my grandparents, who I had never seen before in my life. Things improved from there and I lived with them until I was 15. Now, I live with my uncle and his husband and they have legally adopted me at age 18. Now, I am a healthy happy teenager who is a pre-med major and a vet tech. I wasn't supposed to make it but I did. No one believes how crazy my life was because of how normal I am now. I've had numerous wild creatures come up to me at random times, with absolutely zero fear. In college, I was walking through the woods that stretched between my dorm and the football field, where I parked my car. There was this clearing that overlooked the field, and the track team was practicing. My roommate was a vaulter, so I stopped to watch for a little bit, and leaned up against a tree. I had an apple in my purse, and eventually, I felt this little nudge, a fawn had come up and was nosing my back. I stood stock still and just let it sniff me, and saw Mama Deer was a few feet away. Very slowly, I reached into my back, and Baby bounded away. I took the apple and set it on the ground, and walked away really slowly. Later that afternoon, I was cutting through the woods again, and the apple was still there, but with bites out of it. I've also been hiking and had squirrels and bunnies come up to me with no issue. Birds will land near me and not fly away. It's pretty awesome, but because it will only happen when I'm alone, I don't tell anyone. It's like my own little secret, that I may actually be Snow White. I met a guy online. Fell in love. We were a couple for five or so months, began to make plans to meet. Before that could happen, his sister was killed in a car accident. Meeting plans were put on hold. He started to pull away. I went to Baton Rouge with the Red Cross after Hurricane Katrina. While there, I found out I was being catfished. I then revenge fucked another guy I knew from online for a couple days. He turned out to be a top-notch douche. I went home and called my catfisher. There was no car accident, his sister was alive, and it was basically a panicked attempt to delay meeting. I ended up eventually forgiving him. I flew across the country, met him, and fell in love in person. I moved out there a couple months later. Everything was amazing, we were so happy. For a year. Then he moved for his job, and despite his protests, I loved where we lived and had a great job, followed him. Three weeks later he came to my apartment after work one day. He broke down in tears, and told me he was getting married that weekend in an arranged marriage. 36 hours later I watched him get on a plane and haven't seen him since. Tomorrow is his 7th wedding anniversary. I've been in 25 car wrecks. I've nearly frozen to death and burned to death in the same night. I've been homeless 3 times. I grew up in a family of 13. I climbed an abandoned forestry tower with a girl once, we watched a storm pass to the south then watched the world set off fireworks on the 4th of July right after that. She fell asleep on my lap. I covered her with my shirt and sat freezing all night. That morning, I dropped her off at her house and never saw her again. I hitchhiked across the country multiple times between ages 15 to 22. I have climbed mountains and watched the northern lights. I've slept outside in minus 20, Celsius, I've taken planes, trains, buses, and boats. 
I was so hungry one time that I stole a jack-o'-lantern off someone's porch and ate it. I stood in line for almost two days to see Star Wars 1, and I hated it so much I walked out halfway through the movie. I've been banned from entering the USA, for at least 10 years. There's so much more, and if I had the skill I would write a book. Now at 31 years old, I have a nice little family, and I'm actually pretty boring. LOL. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.